Morphological analysis. In this video, I'm going to go over how linguists analyze a language morphologically. The idea is that we want to analyze words and break them apart into their smallest meaningful parts, that is to say, into their morphemes. And, of course, we want to assign each morpheme to a meaning. The best way to do this is by comparing words within a language. But, of course, we want to compare words that are similar. We want to compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges. So, for example, we want to compare the same part of speech. Or we want to compare words that have the same morpheme in them. Or we want to compare words that have some other feature similarity, like plurals to plurals. That's the idea. In other words, what we're doing is looking for patterns. That's what morphological analysis is. It's pattern finding. You can compare sentences to sentences or parts of sentences to other parts of sentences. So, for example, we could go down to the level of the noun and compare it to other nouns, or the level of the verb and compare it to other verbs, or go a little bit higher to noun phrases and compare them to other noun phrases, or verb phrases to verb phrases. Again, the idea is to compare like with like. The key is to try to identify recurring patterns between the language and the gloss. The gloss is the direct translation. So a good translator would give an idiomatic translation, right? So that's what you would do if you were translating a novel, for example. But when we're doing a linguistic analysis, we want a direct translation, a word by word translation, or even a morpheme by morpheme translation. That's what we call a gloss. And to demonstrate how we do this, we're gonna be looking at Blackfoot plurals. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the, all of our like with like are lined up. So in the left column, we've got the base form of the nouns. In the middle column, we've got the singular forms. And in the right column, we've got the plural forms. So the first thing we can notice is that when we look at the singular column, it's got the base form plus a suffix. And so the first thing we want to do is just draw a line wherever we see the end of our base form and the beginning of our singular morpheme. And we want to do the same thing with the plurals. So let me see if I can do this quickly. So some of them are a little bit tricky because we've got these long vowels in places. And we also see there must be some um, morphological processes going on in here as well. And um, that makes things a little bit more complicated. So for example, when we look at the singular column, we see that for the first, what is it, uh, five words, we're getting very similar singular morphemes. So it's wa, wa, ah, wa, wa. So there must be some sort of deletion phonological rule. So there's a rule that gets rid of the W following an S, presumably. That's a pretty good hypothesis. We would want more data to confirm it, but that seems on the right track. And similarly, we're seeing with the next six, we've got ye, 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 and then the E without the ya, and so presumably following the K, there's some sort of deletion rule. Okay, now I wanna think about that for a moment. Is there any sort of rule, any sort of pattern where we could get wa and ye being basically allomorphs of the same morpheme. That is to say that they have some phonologic, phonemic relationship between each other. That seems unlikely, right? You've got the a ah and the e, you've got the wa and the ya. They're a little too distant from each other. And so it seems more likely that what's going on is that these are different forms of the singular. So 
one thing I can observe in terms of meaning is a difference in the meaning between the first five and the next six. Notice that the first five all refer to animals and the next six refer to inanimate objects. That seems like a pretty significant difference. And that would suggest that these are different classes of nouns and different classes take different singulars. And then we can see the same thing going on with the plurals where we get ixi with the animals and we get istsi with the, uh, with the inanimates. Okay, and again, we're seeing some sort of phonological rules going on here. There's the deletion of the E in some places uh, or the lengthening of an E, deletion, deletion of something else of another vowel and so on. All of that you would ultimately want to account for in a good morphological analysis. But right now we're on a pretty good track to realize that with animals, our singular morpheme is wa, and with our plural morpheme is ixi, and with inanimates, our singular morpheme is yi, and our plural morpheme is istsi.